Stocks are falling for the fourth day in a row, just like they were the last time our next guest was on with us. Joining us to talk about this, Mark Lucchini. He's chief investment strategist at Johnny Montgomery Scott, which has $50 billion under management. Keep in mind, a little over a year ago, he told Bloomberg Television that stocks were headed higher and industrial and energy shares would be among the top performers. Well, check it out. The S&P 500 has climbed 13% since then, and those two industry indexes have gained even more. So a good call. Uh, Mark, good to have you back with Matt and myself. Good afternoon. Thank you. Great to be here. So a good call. What would be your call right now? Uh, our call would be to lean into those high quality blue chip. In fact, those hiding in plain sight U.S. multinationals, uh, particularly in sectors to complement the technology and an energy space in areas like consumer staples and healthcare. Uh, we think those more defensive sectors may likely lead, given the fact that they largely lagged over the last year as we see a melt-up in risk assets maybe starting to taper off. What do you mean by a melt-up in risk, in risk assets? Well, everything was lining up for risk assets to do well. And by risk assets, I'm talking about equities to commodities. Of course, highly accommodated monetary policy, you know, the QE2 announcement, no competition coming in the form of fixed income or cash or cash equivalents. And as a consequence, it became the, the long only trade to be. Uh, we think as this begins to work from a period of uh, a highly expansive phase to one that's settling into a sustainable, albeit perhaps more tepid pace of growth, then investors will be seeking those opportunities to be rewarded through steady, high quality returns that'll come through those dividend hang, paying blue chips. On. So that melt up you think is over, right? Because you mean that they all just sort of jumped like crazy for, you know, for no apparent reason, uh, except for the fact that we were in a recovery and now it's done. Well, it's, uh, it's a function of having come a long way. You know, we're up over 100% from the lows in March of 2009. In fact, if you look at mid and small cap stocks, those indices have already restored all-time highs, mm. uh, even so though the major indices are down a little bit. I think so. And even though corporate profitability remains strong, I think we're in kind of that second derivative where that strength in corporate profitability is going to slow vis-a-vis quarter-over-quarter, year-over-year comparisons. You know, try to make sense of, of the economic backdrop because it feels like even like in a day to, like today, we get a bit of... of of mixed news. I look at the weekly jobless claims numbers. That came in higher than expected. The market didn't like it. Right. Then you get retail sales up, what, more than 8% in April, the best month so far this year. So how do you make sense of the yin and yang of the economic data? Well, I think the fundamental underpinnings for the economy are reasonably good. You know, not terrific. You know, certainly everybody would like to see much faster growth than we're seeing. But in fact, we have had job creation. Mm. Uh, job creation has averaged about 160,000 a month over the last three months. The last reading was 216. Though. Barely keeping up, but drawing down on that elevated unemployment rate. Um, and so while you see a number today, which was a bit off-putting, coming in much higher than expected, I think there's a little bit of noise in it, but mm. you know, troublesome nonetheless. Uh, but, you know, consumers have a certain propensity to spend here in this country, and I think as confidence has started to lift, they're feeling a little bit more comfortable being out in the malls. But you think right now is the time to really get defensive, though. I mean, that's what you mean by moving into these high-quality names uh, around health care. You think that maybe people should watch out here. We're not going to continue the gains that we've been seeing in the past. I think the pace of the gains that we've had in the past is unlikely to continue under the trajectory we've had, certainly over the last couple of years. But we still see gains and we don't see a fall off. I still continue to think that it's a pretty fertile climate for corporate America that's in great shape to continue to show profitability. And given the undemanding valuations that exist in the equity market, and that being, once again, the asset class of choice, given the alternatives, low yielding instruments otherwise, I do think equities remain appealing. You know, Mark, you keep saying that you think the economic underpinnings, they're kind of there, maybe not as strong as we'd like, but they're there. And I keep thinking of a chart that Doug Cliggett brought on this week where he looked at um, the Fed's balance sheet and uh, also looked at the S&P 500 and how highly correlated they mm -hmm. were. Again, so we bring up the debate about take away QE2 and what happens to the stock market. How comfortable are you, especially when those economic underpinnings aren't as strong as you'd like to see them, that when that quantitative easing goes away, that the market doesn't fall apart. Well, uh, it is a bit discomforting. As we know, at the end of QE2, you're going to see a purchaser of treasuries in the form of the Federal Reserve, which was 70% of all the net buying since November Huge. of last year, Huge. go away. 
And in the absence thereof, what does that mean? Uh, so that's the $64,000 question at the moment. Our base case is that the economy is enough inertia, inertia that is, to get through this mm -hmm. period, albeit one that I think is going to be uh, worth monitoring very, very closely and not to be overly dogmatic in your base case because things could change pretty quickly. You're not concerned about inflation going forward? I mean, you don't think the Fed is going to have to worry about that too much? Or speaking of things changing quickly, how quickly could the inflation picture change? Well, it could change. I mean, on a year-over-year -year basis, the food and energy component of CPI, the Consumer Price Index, is up 8%. And that's, of course, pulling the headline inflation number higher. Uh, I think what's important is looking inside the consumer confidence readings where you see that unmooring or unanchoring that the Fed would, be, I think, be worried about not happening. Inflation expectations among consumers is still reasonably intact, albeit you know tied to a lower end at the moment. And as a consequence, that's enabled the Fed to remain on pause. If you could only, you like the big quality, as we hear a lot of people come on and say that, uh, if you could only have three, which would you take? Well, uh, a stock that hasn't necessarily surfaced well in terms of its share price movement, but whose company's fundamentals continue to perform admirably is Microsoft, trading at less than uh, nine times earnings if you pull out the 50 billion or so in cash. Stock's been a dog. Right. I mean, exactly. going back Absolutely. before Down. this one year chart, I mean, it doesn't seem like they can really get it off the ground. Down this year. I can't help but there's going to be some agitation that's going to ha force them to do something with that cash, either increase the dividend quite significantly or perhaps a one-time payout like we've seen occur from them before. Uh, Another area that we continue to like is consumer staples, so a high-quality name in that space might be Procter & Gamble, a company that's globally geared and is benefiting from faster-growing growth that's coming from the emerging market countries. Slow and steady in terms of growth here and returns. Absolutely. Once again, high-quality, blue-chip, pristine balance sheet Fine. and a decent dividend. Just quickly, got a risk play here? Just quickly. Well, uh, continue to be bullish on commodities in general. In fact, would look at this opportunity as perhaps something to step back into and gradually fade into the commodity space because I don't think the super cycle that the commodities are in has necessarily been exhausted at this juncture. Mm. I think rather it's taking a breather. Got it. Mark, thank you so much. Mark Lucini of Jani Montgomery Scott. Thanks thank for coming you. in.